In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we'd like to show you how you can create a reusable title that comes on the screen from the left side, freezes, and then returns back to the left, along with an accompanying graphic. This comes as a request of one of my subscribers, but to do this is a bit more complicated than you might think. So what we're going to do is click on this video and click on the title. We have a lower third here and we'd like to automate the title. Well, the, automating the text is pretty simple. I have my playhead near the middle. I'll just click the diamond on the position value that will set a keyframe. Let's do two of them near each other. And now they have the same values. Now we're going to go back to the beginning and we'll set another keyframe simply by sliding the text to the left so it starts off screen. We'll go to the end and we'll move it back to the left again so it will end off screen. And then when we play this mini clip we see the text come in from the left and then it goes back. It would be great if all we had to do is do the same thing with the graphic bar and we could keyframe it as well. So when we click on our elements bar and try to keyframe, guess what? There are no keyframe controls. In fact, if I click on either the motion or animation tab, I get an error message that animation or motion is only available for titles and it's not a title. So I can't use this particular bar to accomplish that task. Now, if I look up at what I can put in the title designer, I have the object here, but I also have a pip object, a particle. So what we're going to do is actually try to turn this bar into a particle. I'm going to cancel out of this and I'm going to get into my particle designer. And now I'm going to click on the box at the top that the folded over in the upper right corner and has a plus to create a new particle object. And then I navigate in my file system to find the object I want. I'm going to pick this one for our demonstration purposes. Now I'm going to take this and narrow this and then click on the large ball and move it over and click on the triangle head and change the direction to horizontal. We'll lower it and I've got the grid lines turned on so I have a good reference point here. The next thing I want to do is make the, the, the count and the emit rate down as low as possible. Both of them will be one. And then I'm going to change the other objects down. Life variation zero. I'm going to increase the size. Let's increase the size to 60. And we'll take the variation down. We'll leave the speed for now. I'll take the speed variation down as far as I can go and the wave amplitude and the amplitude variation and the frequency, the frequency variation. And then I want to go into the fades and turn all the fades off. And now when I play this, I have a bar that will appear on the screen and move from left to right. Next thing I want to do with this particle is I'm going to decrease the duration to somewhere close to three seconds. And let's see what happens when we play now. Okay, it comes on the screen and its duration ends about here. Now what I need to do is start it off the screen. So we're going to take and hold on this and drag back off. And you have a slider where you can see it if you if you push it too far. And let's play it now and see if it comes on the screen. And it stops right about here. That's that's about the length of it. So now we've got our bar moving from left to right. How do we get it to move back? Well, as a particle, we can't. We can only move in one direction on a particle. So what we're going to do in this case is we're going to take a second particle and overlay it going back. I have to try to visualize about where the end of this is. 
looks like it's about three-fourths between these squares. So I'm going to click on Particle, and we'll click on the same one, and we'll give it similar attributes, only we're going to go in the opposite direction going back. So once again, we'll change the emit rate and the max count. We're going to change the life variation. We'll increase the size up to 60. We won't ha we'll change the size variation. We'll leave the speed for now. And the amplitude will turn down. All these others will reset just like we did the other one and then we're going to make sure we turn off the fade in. And now when we play these side by side, oh, I also have to do one more thing. I need to take the second particle and try to start it. Uh, I'll, move, I'll start it here for now, but we'll eventually start it around where the other one ends. And so if we go back to the beginning and play these, the first one comes out, then the second one moves to the left. Now what I want to do is I want to find the place where they're on the screen at the same time. And I first of all need to change the horizontal appearance of this one so it's just about at the same location. And then I can use my arrow keys on the keyboard pretty much put the one on top of the other. We'll stop and we'll see what this looks like. Okay, because they overlap there's a bit of a snap here. Let's try it this way. It's like I need to go maybe down just a tad. Okay, now let's try it and see what happens. Okay, it starts too far too far to the right, and this is where it's going to take some patience to do that. What you need to take, make sure you're on particle two, and then you can just use your, your keys to move it over slightly so there's not that snap, so that it looks like it's overlapping. It takes a while to make them uh, look like it, it, the one starts where the other ends. There's still a bit of a gap here. So I'd have to keep tweaking this. It, it's a, a little bit of a pain, but you can see a little bit about how we're trying to accomplish that in this particular tutorial. So we'll go this way, a little smoother. We're not quite done yet, but let's pretend we are. Okay, so when we're done, I'm going to save this as a new particle. And I click on Save As, and now I can call this, I'll just call this back and forth. And click on OK. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and remove this and let's go to our title room and I'm going to take the title room and we're going to create a title. We'll start with a generic title here and we'll get into our title designer. Double click on it, and now I have my title that I can keyframe like before, but I'm also going to take my particle. I'll take the one called back and forth, click on OK, and now I have my title going back and forth. We play it. OK. Now all I need to do is take the My Title and keyframe it just like we did before. We'll change the size here. Uh, let's make it maybe uh, yeah, 22 or so. Make it bold. Change the color <laughs> to something bright. Click on OK. 
We'll change the text. Now all we need to do is keyframe the title to match the movement of the bar. And so we'll start off the screen here. Take the My Title and we'll move it off to the left. Again, this will take a bit of patience to get the timing right. And then we move over here to where it's just about full. And we'll set a keyframe for the title here. I forgot to set one at the beginning. We'll set one at the beginning. Now we'll move over here and I'll set a new keyframe. And then as, as it goes on, we need to set another keyframe back on the left side. And let's play what we have. We're going to have to make lots of adjustments the first time around. So that it moves at the same speed as the title. But you get the idea. In order to change the speed, let me show you the easy way to figure that out. If the graphic moves faster than the title, all you need to do is, on the front side, is you need to shorten the distance between the first diamond and the second diamond. So we'll just drag a little bit. That'll shorten it. That'll make it move faster. Now that it's moving closer at the same speed, it looks like we need to speed it up on the other end, coming back. And it may take a little effort to get this the way you want it, so it looks like they're actually hooked one to the other. But you get the idea. Now once you have this done once, you can save this by clicking on Save As. And then you can give this a name, Back and Forth with Title. And click on OK. Now you have that title changed. In any future project, to do the same thing over again, all you need to do is, we'll click on Cancel here. I'll delete this. And now I'll just go on my back and forth with title, drag it down, and I automatically have my title and my background moving back and forth from the left that I can use as often as I want in any different projects. All I need to do when I'm in there is double click on it to get into the title designer and all I need to do is change the text here and I recommend you use a centered text when you get it where you want that way you won't have to make further adjustments in your keyframes for position but that's the complicated way the only way I found to do this by embedding a particle that you design into the title designer and saving it as a new title for continual reuse in your projects in CyberLink PowerDirector.